Coping with Disasters Physical and emotional reactions often occur as a result of a natural emergency or traumatic event such as a terrorist attack. These reactions can happen immediately or weeks or months after an event. Traumatic stress reactions can happen to people of any age and can change a person's behavior, thoughts, and physical health. Common Responses The physical effects caused by a traumatic event include rapid heartbeat, increased respiratory rate, shortness of breath, nausea, muscle and joint aches, tremors, headaches. Seek medical attention if any of these symptoms persist. Thoughts, behaviors, and emotions may also change. These changes include flashbacks or re-experiencing the event, withdrawal from normal social relations, performance problems at work or school, loss or increase in appetite, Difficulty sleeping or nightmares. Feeling overwhelmed, hopeless, numb. Being extremely anxious, fearful, agitated, or irritable. Feeling depressed. Increased consumption of alcohol or prescribed over-the-counter or illicit drugs. what you can do for yourself and children. There are many things you can do to cope with traumatic events. Understand that your symptoms may be normal, especially right after the trauma. Keep to your usual routine. Take the time to resolve day-to-day -day conflicts so they do not add to your stress. Do not shy away from situations, people, and places that remind you of the trauma. Find ways to relax and be kind to yourself. Turn to family, friends, and clergy for support. And talk about your experiences and feelings with them. Participate in leisure and recreational activities. Recognize that you cannot control everything. Recognize the need for trained help and call a local mental health center. Let your child know that it is okay to feel upset when something bad or scary happens. Encourage your child to express feelings and thoughts without making judgments. Return to daily routines. Children and Disasters Children experience trauma and fear during a natural disaster. If they know what to do during a disaster because they have practiced the family disaster drills, they will be better off. When parents are calm, children calm down more quickly. Before disaster, parents can Familiarize yourself with the emergency response plans of schools and or daycare your children attend. Find out if the school or daycare will keep your kids or send them home in an emergency. Decide if your child gets into your home if you are not there. Decide if your children take care of themselves or if a neighbor takes care of them. Develop and practice a family disaster plan. Teach children how to recognize danger signals. Explain how to call for help, 911. Help children memorize important family information. Help children memorize their street address, not the P.O. box. 
create wearable identification cards for children with guardian contact information available for rescue workers. Include children's toys and special foods in 72-hour kit. After a disaster, children are most afraid the disaster will happen again. Someone will be hurt or killed, and they will be separated from family and left alone. Parents can help minimize their children's fears by keeping the family together. Do not leave children with relatives or friends. Take your children with you. Calmly and firmly explain the situation and your plans. Talk to your children at eye level. Encourage children to talk about the disaster and ask questions. Include children in recovery activities by giving them chores that will help them feel they are helping things get back to normal. Reassure children with firmness and love. Sympathize with and resolve their anxieties. Hold your children and spend more time with them. Elderly, special needs, and disasters. People with disabilities should take extra precautions when preparing for a disaster. One of the most important things you can do is have a buddy, someone who can help you evacuate and take care of you. During an emergency, your usual caregiver may not be able to help you. Make sure your buddy knows how to operate any medical equipment you use. If you have an ongoing therapy through a provider, find ways to continue those therapies if that provider is not available in emergencies. When planning for the care of an elderly and those with special needs, please consider the following recommendations. Establish a close network of relatives and friends who can assist your family in an emergency. Make sure helpers know where to find the disaster supply kit, which includes emergency supplies, medications, and other essential equipment. Remind family members to always wear a medical alert tag or bracelet if they have a threatening health condition. Compose a list of special items, equipment, and supplies family members will need during a disaster. Extra supplies people with disabilities and special needs may require are prescription medications, a record of when and how much the medicine you should receive, prosthetic devices, list of style and serial numbers of medical devices, extra eyeglasses, and record of the prescription. Emergency medical certification. Extra oxygen. Extra pillows, bedding. Medical insurance and Medicare cards. Backup power supplies or generators for heat or air conditioning. extra wheelchair batteries, hearing aid batteries,